Even when it's actually netted out. Oh, yeah, exactly. That is what it is. You let it out. Yeah. It's not oh, that. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's, it's not that there's two more transactions in cash. But there would be if it wasn't for these things. There has to be. Either it's cash gold or it's a representative of gold. It's, it's, a, it's a bill. It's a bill. It's a real bill. Now, let, if we go a little bit further, a real bill would circulate all over the world to many different enterprises, not just to these three. I mean, this is just the, the simplest example. Now let's go a step further because prudy, sorry. yes, so it's the simplest example, but the point is valid that uh, you can't isolate no in your example one real bill being drawn by the baker. Okay, I... uh, but by the yeah in the last last transaction that there were bills issued earlier as well. Of but, but, but let, let me back up. You didn't hear the argument we, or the discussion we had that as a new bill is drawn, it's at least inflationary for that period of time. Until what, it what definition are you using of inflation? It increases that? in the money supply. So if you, you know, well, I'm going to split here. Yes, the money supply increases, but automatically the velocity of money decreases. So the efficiency of the gold is improved. Let's go a step further now. I, uh, like the professor, the professor has a different word for this. He calls it invading the gold supply. So this guy has to have gold to pay this bill. This guy has to have gold to pay this bill, as well as the consumer. So gold has to be on hand to make these transactions. Once you have real bills in circulation, you don't have to have any gold there. This gold can be lent out, it can be invested, it can be in bonds, and only small change changes hands, the, the value added. So the efficiency of the utilization of gold increases. Is that okay? Everybody with me? Yeah? No, maybe? Let's, let, let's, go, let's go a step further. I want a $20 trillion GDP. That's my target. I'm not a central planner, but I'm hoping for it, maybe a few years down the road. How do you get there? Well, if you're in this system, either you double your money supply, or you double the velocity, or you know, increase this and that to come up to this new number, right? What if you have real bill circulation? You don't have to touch any of this. You just increase the number of real bills in circulation to accommodate this faster, larger stream of, of circulating capital. So again, real bills are, are playing this role. Now, longer term, decades and so on, yeah, maybe there's going to be some changes. Maybe the purchasing power of this, of this money supply, of this gold, will increase, so you get a larger uh, real GDP with the same amount of money, but I'm talking about relatively fast changes.
Council. Okay. Um, there was rumors on the internet that said uh, India is buying oil from Iran for gold. You know, Iran has been squeezed and uh, shut out and Washington is putting pressure on him. And I thought to myself, India trading their gold for, for oil? Yeah. Nah, Indians love their gold too much. I don't think so. I think it's a rumor. Besides, they can buy oil somewhere else. They've got rupees, whatever. Then I hear another rumor that says Iran is buying food for gold. Food. Whoa. So you're telling me you have a choice between going hungry or spending gold? Well, in that case, I start to believe, yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to spend your gold rather than starve to death. And of course, as soon as you do that, I say, how much gold I have left? Am I going to go hungry? Or how soon before I go hungry? How soon I run out? He says, oh, we've got to get the gold back. Because gold cannot be printed or inflated or what have you. So now you look at the other side. The Indians just got a load of gold from these guys over there for grain or for spare parts. And they say, hey, we'll, we'll give you oil for that. And the Indians can say, well, you know what? It's kind of their gold. We'll trade it back to them for oil. We need the oil. We're not taking a net loss. So why not? So here's the scenario. You, you, they make the deal. They say, oh, yeah. They, they, they balance it out and whatever. Uh, you know. And then the ships load with grain in India and whatever tractor parts and they start going. And the other ships, the tankers in Iran, fill up with crude and blah, blah, blah. Well, suppose they meet halfway in the ocean and turn around and go back. <laughs> Nothing happened. There was no trade. So they have to continue and finish their journey. And then the payment comes. So you can see in each country uh, a convoy of armed trucks and soldiers driving a ton of gold on a pallet to the airport and loading up the airport with the escorts and these jets take off and they fly and halfway across the Atla uh, whatever Indian Ocean they meet, ah, they turn around and go back. What changed? Gold, 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 there's no difference. So the gold didn't actually have to move. The only reason it would actually move is if there's an unbalance of trade or if they don't trust each other. And then they have to physically, I want that gold, I want to make sure it's not tungsten bars with gold plate and vice versa. But what does move is some kind of bill, some kind of paperwork that says so much you know, rice and so much stuff left and arrived here and so on, and it's netted out. That's exactly what happens. And then this is a bilateral trade between two countries. And then I kind of threw in how long before a guy like Chavez wakes up and says, hey, you know, uh, Iran is getting gold for their oil instead of greenbacks? Well, we want gold. And this thing could mushroom. And very well, you could see this, this bill, partial bill circulation, or at least transaction. Now, multilateral means not that the gold sits in each country, but the gold sits at the clearinghouse, which used to be London. And there was trade in bills all over the world, anywhere, and they would go through here, be netted out, and the gold is sitting there, and if one country overall ended up with a net deficit at one point, yeah, gold start to move. So this is a way for this gold business and the real bill business to come back. And it may not be called real bills, maybe it's just called a paper trail or it's done through computer tracking. It's not, that's not the important thing, it's the principle of it. Now there's another excuse for not going on gold. Oh, we don't have gold. Like poor Canada sold all their gold and I wonder who pressured them. They got three tons of gold at the Royal Canadian Mint. Three. I mean even Iran has 300. So Canada was, ah, oh, you know, this isn't going to work for us, we can't do it. Well, sure they can do it. The gold sits at the clearinghouse and the Canadians make sure they ship out more grain and oil and lumber and whatever than they bring in Toyotas and uh, TV sets and whatever. So they build up a net, uh, not a deficit, but a net gain in their, their exchange. And the gold is allocated to them. And if they want, at some point, you say, oh, send it over. We want some of it here. Soon enough, quickly enough, you can do that. So the whole system has to be you know, re, um, restructured. And the quantity has no bearing on this. It's the quality and it's backed by gold. And gold doesn't have to do the heavy lifting. But it must be in the system as the guarantor. And exactly why these bills, you know, suppose 
uh, this trade between Iran and, uh, and India in any other currency couldn't work. I mean, it doesn't work. It's, it's being even been outlawed. So, what else can we add to this? And any, uh, any suggestions, ideas, or maybe some question period? I think, is there anybody that believes in the quantity theory, or did believe in the quantity theory of money? I used to. I used to believe in the quantity theory of money. Mm -hmm. Sure. Fair warning, it took me 18 months to get it out of my system. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long time. Yes. If you can analyze different scenarios, yes. let's say Americans are in, military are in Afghanistan. And okay. Building schools. I'm sorry, building schools, yes. Building roads. We have all kinds of different expenses. And they pay in cash. Because the local contractors will not accept anything. Mm -hmm. So usually the contract look is that they issue some contract mm -hmm. and as they have a payment plan, they meet somewhere in a village mm -hmm. at the table. Like this. <laughs> and they inspect the work, progress and the pay. Now Tell me how this works because it has to come from Treasury. The money. With, okay. Yeah. So what is the operation there and how this ties with Well, is? first of all, uh, Iran is under a certain amount of duress now. Iraq. I mean, uh, Iran. My, my example is Iran. Now, in Afghanistan there was a Russian occupation and these um, freedom fighters these freedom fighters were, they called them freedom fighters, they were supported by the Americans, the CIA, they gave them weapons, stingers, this and that, drive the Russians out. And then they wanted their own stuff and, and they didn't want the Americans there. They said, thank you for helping us, now go home or whatever. Well, they became terrorists suddenly and the uh, uh, the CIA or the Americans wanted to, they started to fight. Remember this, the, the northern forces versus the Taliban forces and all this stuff? I don't know if you remember, but it's, it's not down the yeah, memory. Well, well. Okay. So you know how they, do you know how they paid those guys? Who? The northern forces who did the fighting, the bulk of the fighting against the Taliban, how were they paid? Not like this. They were paid with gold. Mm -hmm. The Americans had to take their paper Convert it into gold, and then they just sat. They said, "No paper, fight, no fight." Oh, gold, gold, okay, fight, and that's what it was. Now these other guys are still believing that. Oh, maybe maybe this paper. This paper is an asset. It has some value. It's depreciating. It's doing this. It's doing that. But it still has value. Now, one of the wonderful things here is you really can't start doing this under gold standard. If the American Treasury starts to send out gold. They have to get it back, or they have to mine it at great expense, at the rate of two, one or two percent a year, or trade for it or do something. They can't print it up. Yeah, but you broke here beautiful because you said farmer, miller, yes. baker, consumer. Mm -hmm. Now, who is consumer? In, uh, in well, the okay. But but the thing is, is sorry. that gain for American people or for what reason this okay. is all done and how, where is the consumer for that? There isn't. It's, war is, not a, is, a, is a consumer in itself. It's a destruction of capital. If you build a tractor and it takes five tons of steel and then you plow your fields and you grow wheat and you do this and that, it, it, it gains something. It's a, it's a, it adds value. So you're saying war is outside of the scrutiny of the economy? No, no, what I'm saying is war is destructive of capital and of wealth. Instead of paying these guys to fight over there in Afghanistan, leave them alone. Go home. Rebuild your levees so uh, the Mississippi River doesn't flood or, or the Katrina doesn't destroy this or interstates or whatever. There's plenty. You know, the U.S. Uh, Society of Civil Engineers estimates lately, the last year, to three trillion dollars approximately to bring U.S. infrastructure up to, up to snuff, up to quality level. Not new infrastructure, just fix the um, aqueducts, the bridges, the roads, 
uh, the, the power lines and all this stuff. And, and about 10 years ago, it was only about 1.4, 1.6 trillion. Now it's up to three. And they've got military bases all over the world. And they can't afford to pay these guys. They just print more money. Bring them home. Put them to work. Start fixing the roads. Start building this. Start doing something productive. Because if you build a road, there's going to be traffic and trucks and they add value. War destroys value. It sucks value out of the country. And of course, blood. I mean, I'm talking about thousands of people death. So, so this doesn't apply to military shenanigans. You, that goes straight to the gold. You, you, you're not going to get somebody... I mean, how can it be conceivable that these guys with tanks and rifles and so on will pay you back in gold? Not unless they loot somebody else's gold, you see, like the Spaniards did uh, and some, and, you know. Any more? How much time? Um. We've got another 20 minutes. Okay. I've got a few comments. Okay, go, go. Um, First of all, you should remember that the business, the action, the natural social interaction comes first, and the bills come after. Okay, it's just the representation of that which would be happening anyway. Okay, you don't have the bills first and then hope to come up with the business later because uh, <laughs> I'll be talking about that later. But the idea is business first, bills are a consequence of that. And another thing is that um, the emphasis obviously goes from quantity of money to the quality of money. So emphasis goes from quantity to quality which is much harder to, to, to measure. Yeah, as a grasp that, of you course. Know, a grasp, okay. So, those who are wondering whether you're going to get, you have to think in terms of the equation Rudy has there, okay. If, the, if you start realizing that the quality of whatever you're using is declining rapidly, and I don't know when that will occur, okay, but it will occur at some point, then that induces the, uh, the velocity to go higher because you don't want it. Pass the parcel just uh, dominates the, the whole system. Let's say that happens. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to this? Well, it's going to increase in nominal terms. Nominal terms ah, yeah. But the real machinery, the real wheat, the real stuff stays the same. So there's your runaway inflation. When people say, oh, my money is depreciating me, I'm going to spend it fast before it turns dust and that's where you get your wheelbarrow full of money and desperate to spend it before even a wheelbarrow full of money can't buy a loaf of bread and it's important I mean to, to emphasize that the quality could of the money to, of the money could change with nothing outstanding changing <laughs> what is quality quality is in human consciousness perception a perception of quality is quality as we look at it in Hungarian terms when people perceive their money, that same piece of paper, that, that note, they perceive it as worthless, it's worth less. It becomes that because nobody perceives it as being valuable. And it's got very little to do with the quantity, if anything. Anything else? Yes, Keith. I, I wanted to uh, make a critique. Yes. Earlier you used the word inflation to refer to an increase in the money supply which I would suggest not doing because we're de-emphasizing the quantity of money. So if inflation is a bad thing and increasing the quantity is not important, we shouldn't associate a bad thing with increasing the quantity. Mm -hmm. this, Thank you. At this moment, you use the word inflation to refer to rising consumer prices. You see how hard it is to get rid of this influence? I, I definitely I... urge not to use the word inflation to refer to Give me another price. word. Give me another word. Yes. Um, well, to crack up boom is the well, <laughs> okay. There's lots so of that, that's what that is, right? Yeah, you're right. Though. Everybody is frantically trading at the end. The shelves and the stores are stripped of all the real goods. Because once I realize I hold this wad of paper cash with green ink on it in my pocket, and once I realize that that is not going to have any value, it doesn't have any value to me because I don't think it's going to have any value to anybody next month. I'll go to any store that has any, if I can't buy food, I can't buy ammunition, I can't buy the things I might like to buy, I'll buy 50 pairs of ladies' shoes. Not because I need them, but because presumably after the dollar crashes, at least somebody will have a value in ladies' shoes, whereas the green pieces of paper in my, in my pocket, certainly nobody will have any value. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's, I'm going to talk more about this tomorrow, but from an engineering point of view, feedback. Mm -hmm. um, negative feedback, positive feedback, runaway effects, stable effects, these are all very, very important. And just to get a taste of it, if you've got a thermometer or a thermostat in your house, the temperature goes down, you turn on the furnace, brings up the temperature. The temperature goes up, turn on the air conditioning, brings down the temperature. So homeostasis, your human body does the same sort of stuff. You're, you're cold, you start shivering, warm up. You're hot, you start sweating, perspiring, you cool off. So it tries to keep a, a stability. And that's what the economy does when it's left well enough alone because of the natural result of human action, free human action. But today we're try to stick to the quantity theory. So I'm going to throw in another one. Nobody brought this example up, but they could. You know, um, somebody talked about the Spanish uh, gold and all this stuff, and that was illegally acquired. It was stolen. And that's no different than the stealing that's going on in the paper world. It's just a slightly different uh, way to do it. Morally incorrect. And all the energy went into the military which is not productive unless there's gold to loot and when the gold runs out, what do you do? So, inflation or I don't know what you want to call it, Keith. Right, increase in prices of consumer goods. And then some people sometimes trot out the uh, 49ers, you know, the gold strike in California. So, oh, look at all the increased prices. Well, if you look at world prices, aside from little wiggles on the chart, nothing much happened. And yeah, clearly in California it cost I don't know, an, 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 a dollar for an egg, whereas in, in Boston it was a penny, or God knows what the numbers were, but a huge difference. So that was local price increases. And why? Well, thousands of people converged on this, not this, this, this place where there's nothing, no civilization hardly. For an egg to get there from east to west, had to go around the Cape Horn by sailing ship and arrive there, and, or a shovel. So a shovel in, in the east coast God knows what it cost, a dollar. By the time he got there, it cost two, three dollars. Oh, look at all the inflation that the gold cost. Well, that's not But that's that the all. biggest gains in California we made for Levi's, for instance. Biggest, I'm sorry, biggest what? Biggest profits, not in gold. Oh, of course, that's, that's another problem. Sure. Levi's or the people. Who yes, yes, yes. The guy selling the shovels. Buying the shovels and gold mining <laughs> equipment or whatever, mechanical yeah. equipment. Or even the whorehouses, yeah? <laughs> It's worth noting that wherever there are pockets of, <coughs> let's just say, bad behavior, mm -hmm. uh, you do get, and theft of monetary resources, you do get an escalation in local prices sure, around. Of course. You know, the Somali pirates, it costs something ridiculous like $10 for a cup of coffee in one of those villages. No question, but that's, that's not a monetary phenomenon, that's the military. Yeah. You've got to pay for the military to protect your stuff, that's an expense, it's the cost of doing business. Isn't and that what, uh, what, sorry, uh, isn't that what caused tulip mania in, uh, in uh, Holland? Um, all the gold that migrated to Amsterdam or wherever the, the vault was. Well, this, again, it, this was a local phenomenon. And I, I don't see that as being worldwide. It was just a mania. People got the idea that they could get oh, rich by the buying. Same thing, the gold thing in the, in the, oh, I see what you're saying. The, yeah. Because sure. It was vast on That's that. right. Thousands and thousands of people went there hoping to make their fortune, and a handful of them did, and most of them didn't. And the guy who sold the eggs, and the guy who sold the shovels, I heard stories, I don't know if this is true or not, I heard that to get your laundry done, they shipped the stuff to Hawaii and then back. <laughs> They, they, they imported uh, Chinese. Chinese. Ch people would come from China to wash the clothes of the miners. Yeah, stuff like that. Well, so you see, this is a, a local temporary distortion, and soon enough it goes away. But this, this other one, this monetary thing, is not local, and it's not going away until it goes away. <laughs> yes, Lou. You, uh, in, the, in the previous uh, flip chart page, yeah. you. Um, you, were so, you wrote down on the money supply gold and, and real bills. Yes. Uh, and um, you attempted to demonstrate anyway, or maybe you demonstrated, uh, that um, velocity of um, real bills is quite high. Uh, so therefore, uh, one, Could be. One, one bill, um, mm -hmm. uh, a, a moving coin, can mm -hmm. achieve a lot more in terms of productivity mm -hmm. uh, on the, on the, uh, 
with real bills. Yeah. The question is, if this is in a, in a, goal, a proper gold standard sure. environment, what is the total money supply? In well, a gold standard, okay. a proper gold standard environment. Of course, you'll got you'll have gold. You'll have you know uh, gold redeemable, presumably script. And you'll have, uh, you'll have uh, uh, real bills, but real bills is only for uh, consumer goods in high demand. It's not for long-term project financing. So, what else is in the money supply under the gold standard? Sandy did some work on this. <coughs> <coughs> okay, we got two Bs. This is bills, and we have bonds, and we have gold. By definition, this is money. Gold is money and nothing else. Now, money supply uh, implies a monetary role for the real bills, i.e., they clear credit, which they do while they're in existence. Mm -hmm. So, they complement the gold money supply. And bonds do the same thing in a longer term. Uh, going back to the baker, the, the miller, and the, the, the farmer, that uh, ovens and, and stirring pots and stuff have to be financed or paid for somehow. The, the milling stones and machinery, whatever, have to be financed. The farm acreage itself, that's financed through the bond market. And again, gold can support a huge bond market with virtually no limit, as long as the temporal effects are, are properly done. There was no selling short to it, no rolling over, but matching maturities. That, that bond matures a day before the obligation has to be paid. And same thing over here. This gold can supply or support an enormous circulation of bills. And I gave a very simple linear example, but it's not linear, it goes all over. And who says that that bill can only change hands you know, in its 90-day life, three times or five times, how about 10 times, how about 50 times, how about any number of times? Uh, when these Iranians and Indians swapped their gold for oil and they net it out, what if they net it out and net it out again before the next shipment even arrives? So you pile up another layer of paper and another, and then you net it out instead of once every month, you net it out like a futures market once every day. You could ship thousands of loads of fuel and everything with a nominal amount of gold and the bills fly, fly. That's what Adam Smith said. Wagon way in the sky. And that's what he meant by fly, obviously not literally fly. Today... Well, that, that, that's gold. Yeah, that's, they do. Uh, not in Adam Smith's day. There were no flying. There was only... Uh, no, no, no. But that phrase is, you go to Panama Canal. Is you're a captain of the ship and you work for the oil company or whatever. You go into the ship to, and you want to go to the canal. Okay, what does that have to do with You the have to have thing? cash. They have to pay in cash. At the canal? Yes. Maybe. And you can go. If you don't have cash and you can. Did you guys come from the canal? Oh, you're yeah. talking about you can't pay them with gold. Is that, what you, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Of you course, because there are legal tender laws. There is a dollar yeah. That's fine. There are legal tender laws on the books that prevent gold from circulating or real bills from circulating as a consequence. That doesn't mean that's the natural state of things. It just means there are legal tender laws. These legal tender laws were drawn up before World War I because everybody knew the world couldn't last more than a few months because everybody would run out of money, out of gold. And in fact, the first smell of war, uh, the combat, and start to call their loans, start to pull in their gold to fill up their warehouse. But that wasn't nearly enough. So they passed the legal tender laws that says a banknote, a promise of gold, printed on it was this uh, bill and titles bearer to a certain quantity of gold were promoted, promoted to money itself. It's totally fraudulent, of course. And that's where that was one of the major steps in the decline of the gold standard. Okay? Yeah, anybody else or any more comments? Steve? Um, yes. So, uh, I think I have just a question here to go back to the, your point on, uh, on using the term inflation. Um, we have, we can have a lot of examples of uh, places where people either uh, 
create new media of exchange or extend credit that acts in a sense like a proxy online. So the question is when is this stuff good and when is this stuff bad? Or when does this stuff cause the business cycle, when does it not? Okay. It's so all was, uh, if I if, if I may continue, I just want to uh, so sort of share, share an idea with you and I'd like to get mm -hmm. to think about it. So let's, let's assume we live in an economy in which uh, gold is money, everybody uses gold as money, but then people will probably still transact in silver, and silver will still have a uh, role as a uh, mm -hmm. medium of exchange. Yes. And it's not impossible to imagine that other metals or uh, commodities might play a role as a medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. I do not see that as causing any issues. As what? That's causing any negative issues in, oh, I don't in that. the future. Fine. And similarly, I see the real bills or any, any other form of credit that is extended will not cause these problems. Where I think um, these uh, inflationary problems would come into the economy would be when this creation is um, not happening on a consensual basis between uh, free, between counter parties exchanging freedom. Which creation? I'm not sure. The money creation or money creation. creation of the materials, uh, the media of exchange or any form of money or any... Uh, okay. So of you're money. saying people are going to reject gold? No, no, no. no, no, no well, no, that's no. what I heard. No. No? no, what, I no, 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 no. what I'm saying is that people, uh, as long as people are free to use, sure. uh, are free to con contract using whatever media of exchange mm -hmm. they want that's fine. and extend credit to each other, then things will be fine. But I I think the so. problem is when, you, when the use of coercion is used in order to extend the credit or to create money without um, at, at the mm -hmm. point, basically, used through legal so. tender laws or through any of the other mechanisms. Yeah. So we want to really think about it, um, deposit insurance is that. The okay. idea of I, I agree with you 100%. Any coercion starts to mess up the system, and that's exactly. the whole point. Exactly. This gold became money over how many thousand years? Five, ten, God knows, but ancient, ancient prehistory. And it came from spiritual values yeah. and, and whatever. Real bills came from uh, medieval times, hundreds of years of development. When there were medieval fairs, there had to be means of exchange other than gold. And they were all, I don't want to get into too much detail Phoenicians. on it. Phoenicians. There are cre what? Phoenicians. Phoenicians. Well, I'm talking about the, the city states where they had a fair. And people come in and they don't want to, the merchants don't bring their gold. They want to trade their goods. And to allow this trade to take place, chits were drawn up that expired at the end of the fair. That was one of the things that led to real bills. And similar thing here, when interest was allowed, legalized, then the bond markets developed. So all this is the right way for it to happen. Now, we, today our system is fraudulent. It, money is borrowed into existence. But in ancient China, money was fraudulent and it was brought into existence at the point of the emperor's spear. It wasn't borrowed, it was just printed, period. And that's why I get my hat will stand up when I read Ellen Brown about, oh, it would all be fine if only the government was allowed to print the money instead of the bank printing the money. <laughs> you know, uh, the great, and, 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 and um, Daryl talked about this. Daryl has connection to the Chinese culture. And what happened, it's, I talk about this in my book too. What happened was he didn't want to pay silver. So he wrote checks that this check is as good as silver. And if you don't accept it, and in the meantime, he filled his warehouse with silver. And Chinese dynasties collapsed because of this, or if you like, congruently. I mean, whatever was the morals that caused the collapse, and this was the mechanism, I, that's the thing. And it happened so many times, the Chinese passed law that said, never again, paper, uh, paper money. But of course, people broke that law eventually, and the communists did that, and they went on to paper, but there's still a lot of silver in China. So to go back to the, uh, to, to, to the question we were uh, saying about the quantity of money needed, could we say that the quantity of money is whatever is uh, used consensually yeah, for sure. exchange, uh, whereas, and so in a sense, it's not, it's, it's not entirely quantifiable, mm -hmm. because, no. um, I mean, there are exchange rates between different media of exchange, but it's not, there is no, it's, it's not a game of monopoly where there's a fixed set of money where you and just exchange it. Any, anybody can create money if somebody else will accept it. Of course. Yeah. Well, and wait I, a minute. I think, I think we need to make a distinction between money, which is gold, and the real bill, which is voluntarily created, which is not money, but essentially a promise to pay. Sure. Getting back to Sandeep's lecture earlier, a promise to pay gold is not the same thing as gold. 
A promise of eggold is not money. It's good quality credit, it's good faith credit, it's a real bill. Yes, but money is not of the inflationary. Okay, can I, can I, uh, guys, let's, let, let's get our definitions right. Money is that which extinguishes all debt, or the way these guys put it, the ultimate extinguisher of debt. A real bill does not extinguish debt. It clears it, and clears it, and clears it, and then the gold kicks in, but it only has to kick in once. That's the thing. And it could be silver, there's a word for that, it's called specie, which is metallic money. And whenever I read an article and they say the yellow metal, the precious metal, it's like, what is this? This is the monetary metal. And then the gold-silver ratio, how much gold uh, it costs to buy silver or how much silver it takes to buy gold, this is a free market thing. But you need one reference, one numeraire, one measure, and that is gold, no question about it. And if, if people want to trade other stuff, that's fine. And who says they can't do barter? Who says they can't trade oil for grain? But how do they calculate the value of the oil and the value of the grain? You've got you to compare it to the numeraire, the gold. Yeah? Okay. Um, it's, it's five o'clock, and uh, I'll just quote someone we've all heard of here, a famous chap called Mr. J.P. Morgan who said that gold is money, everything else is credit. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Morgan knew it. JP? JP. JP Morgan. So, even silver is credit? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. He will try. <laughs> no, 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 that's because he was asked, the question he was asked, this was a, a, a Senate committee, commission or committee mm -hmm. hearing, and the question was, what is the role of gold in the financial yeah, system? Of course. I understand, I'm just throwing it out that it could be silver pretty well, but it's probably not as good money, it doesn't have the specific value of gold. Okay, back in 15 minutes, thanks very much Rudy. All right.